what is it that makes us horror fans? At what point do we think there's something delicious about fear? For me, it started when I was five years old. It was the early 80s, Christmas vacation. Family was watching a movie that I had no interest in at the time. And I was just playing around like a kid does. And then came the part where I came around the corner and I saw this. <laughs> Scared the shit out of me. I couldn't comprehend what I had just seen. I had never seen anything like that before. It scared the living daylights out of me. I couldn't sleep. I had nightmares. It took me years to get up the courage to watch that scene again. And when I finally did, my hands were livid. I was sweating, I was fearful, and then the scene came, and then it was all over, and when it was done, I was exhilarated. I was like, oh my God, that was terrifying. Get me more. To start, I need to bring you back, say about 90 years. This is a time when film was new and special effects have yet to be seen. Audience members from this period have no idea what's in store for them. For the first time, ghastly images and monsters reserved only for the imagination were suddenly and without warning unleashed onto the screen. Most film historians would agree that the first full-length horror movie was The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari in 1920. It was a German film about this doctor and his sideshow freak Cesar who resides in the title cabinet. There's a whole bunch of reasons why this movie is very unsettling. First, but certainly not least, is the character of Cesar, played by German horror film star Conrad Veidt. Although they never reference Cesar as a zombie, contemporary audiences could see that zombie movie makers to come took a few cues off of his performance. Conrad Veidt was so menacing on the screen that years after his death, Batman director Bob Kane actually modeled the Joker off of his appearance in The Man Who Laughs, 1928. The expressionism used in the cabinet was also one of the reasons why it was so unsettling to audiences. There were stools that stood five feet tall and made no sense. There were paper mache backgrounds that had houses that were sitting on 45 degree angles, windows that were horribly off kilter. This movie was designed to make you think that you were in the middle of a nightmare. And it succeeded. The cabinet of Dr. Caligari has murder, supernatural tones, and a shocking twist ending that was one of the first of its kind. It was certainly ahead of its time, and for this reason, film enthusiasts still herald The Cabinet as one of the greatest horror films. Nineteen twenty-two, director F. W. Murnau directed the first film adaptation of Bram Stoker's Dracula, titled Nosferatu. Audiences were repulsed by the hideous Count Orlok played by another German film star, Max Schreck. So powerful was Nosferatu's influence that Orlok's rat-like features and long fingers created a new plague-ridden vampire type that could be seen in horror movies decades later. The best example would be Toby Hooper's film adaptation of Stephen King's Salem's Lot in 1979. Although names, dates, and settings were changed, the story of Nosferatu was so derivative of Bram Stoker's Dracula that Stoker's widow sued the production company for copyright infringement and won an injunction to have all copies of the movie destroyed. But by that time, it was distributed worldwide and thankfully, it survived the purge. <laughs> 